Today on Law Weekly, we assess the judiciary in the outgoing year with a senior advocate of Nigeria, Wole Olani Pekun. We also talk about the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, plus the views of some senior lawyers on how to decongest the court. That's the lineup. Hello and welcome. I am Shola Shuyeli. 2016 has been full of activities for the Nigerian judiciary. From the basic to the unusual, the judiciary witnessed it all. But what are the thoughts of key players and how can things be improved in the new year? We kickstart conversations around these issues with a man many refer to as the lawyer's lawyer, senior advocate of Nigeria, Chief Wole Olani Pekun. Arguably one of Nigeria's leading barristers, he has been involved as counsel and amicus curia in many of Nigeria's landmark cases. He's also in top demand internationally as an expert in Nigerian law. I began our chat by asking his assessment of the judiciary in the year 2016. I want to say this, without any fear of contradiction, that judicial has saved our, democra our, our democracy from crumbling, our nation from disintegration and disintegrating, from falling like a pack of cards. Some people might not believe me. They might not agree with what I'm saying. But I am a participant. I am an actor. I am a courtroom lawyer. From the High Court to the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, that is my natural habitat. I appear there every day. I'm not an armchair commentator or critic. I go there. I participate. I argue before every one of the courts in Nigeria and all over, all over the country. So I know what I'm saying. Even if some people don't believe me, they should give me the benefit of the doubt. And they should respect my opinion. Democracy is not played and it's not practiced in any part of the world the way we practice it here. Here it is do or die. Here it is kill and go. Apology to the mobile police of those days. Here we do not respect the constitution. We do not respect the sacredness of the ballot box. Everybody who goes, anybody, every, any political party, goes for an election with the intention of outsmarting, outrigging, outkilling, outmarcheting, outgunning the other. That is the reality. People who are ready to say this in Nigeria of today. And then you do all these. You go back to the court. You go back to judges who are not there when you are cleaning, when you are maiming, when you are rigging, when you are distributing money. The largesse. And at the end of it all, you come to blame the arbiter, the judex. I don't think it is fair. Having appeared up to the Supreme Court, in respect of election matters and other matters, commercial and all that, and more particularly in respect of election matters, I would give the Supreme Court kudos for what the Supreme Court did on all the various election matters that came to read on appeal. For the first time in the history of the Supreme Court, to the best of my knowledge, the judges or justices of the Supreme Court who participated in each appeal didn't know that they would sit until midnight. We had this. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, would not constitute the panel. Nobody will know. The registry will not know. The lawyers will not know. The judges themselves will not know. I understand, I heard, and I believe that what happened was that the briefs would be distributed to all the justices. The record of appeal or records of appeal will be destroyed to all of them. So all of them will master, all of them will read, all of them will be familiar. And then midnight, the gentleman will call those who will sit. You are sitting tomorrow, Barney. And immediately after sitting, they didn't allow, they didn't give room for lobbying. To me, there should be no lobbying of judges. It's never done. It's uncivilized. It's barbaric. But then, in order to forestall lobbying, I haven't read the records, haven't read the briefs of argument. That same day, they would just maybe stand down for a few days, I mean for a few minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, then they would say, they would come back to deliver their judgment. Then reasons postponed. 
deferred, it saved us from a lot of international, from global ridicule, global opprobrium. Then to that, to me, we should give them kudos. And let me say this. Few Supreme Courts, Supreme Courts, or upper courts in the world are saddled with election and political cases as we have in Nigeria. If I'm not aware of any, look at Clinton and Trump. Plurality of votes, Clinton won. Electoral colleges, Trump won. Immediately before even the, you know, the, 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 and I hope it will be part of our political and democratic culture. Let's give it to him. Now, having said that, we have to review. Is it, do we continue as if we are not aware or we are unaware of what is happening? Abasha did something. He created in his constitution a constitutional court. I still recommend that we have a constitutional court. Where all these political cases go and we do not we do not besiege our Supreme Court. We do not overwhelm our Supreme Court. We do not hamper our Supreme Court with you know, handling of the, the, um, political cases throughout the year. It's never done and should not be done. And we should halt it. We should stop it. Now, to the other side of it,